Hello, brothers and sisters. Let's take a look at what is the grace and the mercy of the Most High. Now, for all our life, we have known that grace is a free gift from the Most High, Yah. It is a free gift to all who choose to believe in Him and believing in Him is believing in His Word. His Word was made flesh. His Word was made flesh. From Genesis to Revelations, that's his word. And it was made flesh. And the Most High bears witness through his Holy Spirit of his word, which was made flesh who came in the flesh from heaven, born through a virgin, Mary, whom Christ, Yahshua Mashiach, whom you call Jesus Christ, came out of, Virgin Mary, and was born into this world, into the lineage of David, King David, And he walked a perfect walk with the Most High, which means he obeyed the Father's commandments. And he told us to walk as he walked, do as he do. Follow him. That word follow does mean believe. Believe in him. Follow him. If you believe in someone, you eventually... that faith to work in your life and that's what the son did when he came to show us how we should live how we should behave how how we should be obedient to the heavenly father his total walk was grace given to us that we may see and know that that his walk was true. This is the way to follow the Most High. Grace is given so that you can turn to the Heavenly Father through the sacrifice of his Son. You could turn to, your, to the Heavenly Father and walk with the Most High, walk in His ways, be an obedient child to your Father in heaven. This grace period was given so that you can repent and turn from your sins. This is the forgiveness of the Father through the sacrifice of His Son that you may have a chance to walk right with him without instantly facing the judgments that are written. But you will face them if you have not repented and turned and been converted, as the scriptures say. You will face the judgments at death. Once you die, uh, at the judgment, after you die, you wait to the judgment. Then you... You, you'll go before the Father and be judged. For as the scriptures say, those who are without law shall die without law or shall perish without law. Now, Paul really meant that when he said that in Romans. 
Um, let's look at some more stuff that Christ said. Christ said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 18, I have not come to destroy the laws or the prophets. But I have come to fulfill. I am I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no words pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. And many look at this, and they cannot see that this is part of grace. Well, Christ is telling you, I, I didn't come to destroy the law. That means the books that was given to Moses, that, you know, Moses wrote. He didn't come to destroy that. All the prophets, the books of the prophets, he didn't come to destroy that either. He came to fulfill those things. But if you carefully read during this time of grace and mercy, you have time to read. If you carefully read them, you'll find out there are many prophecies that are still unfulfilled in the prophets by Christ. There are many things still unfulfilled in the laws, written inside of the laws itself, the books of Moses that he wrote. There are still things in there unfulfilled. That's why Christ say, to heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle, shall pass away from the law. Now, we are used to hearing the law is done away with. That's not part of grace. That's some man who told you that the laws was done away with and you don't need the Old Testament. You don't need the books of Genesis through Malachi. It's not part of grace. Grace is recognizing that the word was made flesh and what word are we dealing with? The word of God. That's from Genesis to Revelation. You cannot throw away the whole, even half the book. You can't throw away one chapter. Are you throwing away a part of Christ? You're not believing in that part. He was the word made flesh. And we're going to go over some, um, some forgiveness verses. And you have to convert to these things. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 through 15, it says, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So, when people tell you, once grace, always grace. Once you have grace, you will always have grace. They're not correctly reading scripture to you or you're not correctly reading scripture and getting an understanding that you can lose your grace once you get grace. Because here, if you choose to believe what this verse says, it's telling you, if you don't forgive men their sins, the Father will not forgive you your sins. John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So confession is a part of this grace period. There's more to grace than just saying the prayer, you know, or reading John 3.16 there's more to grace we know that James said faith without works is dead and if we read John 1 and 9 again look what it says, if we confess our sins that's, that's an act, that's a work Yes, you don't have to work to obtain grace. But your grace would start working through you.
If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Galatians, no, Colossians 3 and 13 says, Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. This is a commandment here. It's telling you, you must forgive others. That is a part of grace. When you receive the grace of mercy, you convert your soul and you start doing things differently. You think differently. Acts chapter 10 verse 43. It reads, To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Now when you believe in someone, You follow that person. You emulate that person. You do as they do. Be as they be. Who are you being like today? Mark 11 and 25 says, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Proverbs 17 and 9. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. And this is so true. You dwell on something that one of your friends may have done to you, you will separate. And it may be years and years until y'all forgive one another and you come together again. That's why this proverb is so great for friends. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. Uh, Psalms 32 and 5 says, Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I would confess my rebellion to the Lord and you and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Matthew's eighteen and verse twenty one. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he when he sins against me? Up to seven times, Jesus Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Let me reread that one in the King James Version. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto, unto thee until seven times, but unto 70 times seven And 70 times 7 is 490. That's how many times you're supposed to forgive someone. Forgiveness and grace goes hand in hand. Mercy and grace goes hand in hand. Matthew 6 and 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Ephesians chapter 4 and 32. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 2 and 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of Almighty Yah, or Yahuwah.
or God, as some call him. Peter, chapter 5, verse 10. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Now, have you been established? Have you been strengthened? Have you been restored? Have you been converted? Have you become that new person? Have you put on the new man or the new woman? Have you changed your ways, your thinking, your habits? Or are you still doing all the things that you did before you had believed? Have you not let those things go? God's grace is not an excuse to sin, but rather a reason to love and serve him more fully. And that is a great quote, but it's not a biblical, but it is from of the Bible. Philippines 2 and 13, for God is working in you giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So it's not about your will. What pleases you? He gives you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. And that's where the one spirit will come in at. Where all of God's children who are of the Heavenly Father, will do His will according to His will, according to what pleases Him. Whereas in Christianity, there are thousands and thousands of different interpretations of everything floating around out there. It is impossible to have that one spirit in Christianity. But if you come out, you will get away from all those spirits and you come under the one spirit, the one truth, and it will lead you into all truth. And the Messiah is the truth. He is the word made flesh. He is the, uh, he is the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. You must believe it all. You must read it all. You must study it all. You must obey it all from Genesis to Revelations. No word will come back void. 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. See, the grace of God was with him. And he labored abundantly. Works. Faith without works is dead. The works that you do after you receive grace, after you've received the free gift of grace, the works that you do bears witness that the Holy Spirit is with you and you are one with the Father and the Son. These are the works you will produce after the free gift of grace. Grace is not a ticket to do what thou wilt, which is the motto and the commandment of the Church of Satan. Their motto is to do what thou wilt. Look it up on the net. And what we have all these different denominations and churches doing what they wilt. 
rather than obeying the commandments of the Most High. And there's so many commandments of men in the church and so many pagan rituals going on and pagan celebrations, pagan feast days right in the Christian church. And it's a normal thing for everyone, but not for the remnant who has come out of there, come out of it. We do not partake in the things that would steal our grace from us. We follow the feast days of the Most High. We follow the commandments, the Ten Commandments of the Most High. We follow His law, such commandments, obediently, because they are in the New Covenant. That is part of the grace as well. You will have, according to Scripture, according to Hebrews chapter 8 and chapter 10, You will have the laws, statutes, and commandments put in your minds and your hearts to do them. They were never destroyed, never done away with, not put on hold. They were rolled into the new covenant. And this is part of grace. Giving you this understanding is part of grace. The Levitical priesthood was changed at the cross. Why? Because Christ became the head priest, the high priest. And the priesthood changed to the order of Melchizedek, where the body is the temple of the Most High now. It is no longer in a physical building where the Levites were the high priest. And they... Um, performed all the duties of the high, of the priest in the temple. But now that the order of Melchizedek is taken over, which Christ is the high priest of that order, your body is the temple. You are the temple of the Most High. The Most High wants to dwell in you. That's part of grace. And having this understanding is part of the grace message as well. That's something your faith and belief has to be a part of. Knowing that not all the laws of the Most High was done away with. Christ altered and changed some of them. But you have to know which ones. This is part of grace as well, so that you can receive forgiveness of going wrong and following the commandments of men. You have to know these things too. The dietary laws of the Most High was specifically given to Israel so that they may be a holy people and they wouldn't eat unclean foods. You see, the Levitical priesthood was a preparation for better things to come. Mm -hmm. You were never supposed to eat catfish and shrimp and crabs and pig, swine's flesh. If you are a holy person, if you are a child of the Most High, you will not put those filthy, unclean things in your body. For you are the holy temple of the Most High now. You must go back and read the things of the what the Levites did to keep the temple clean and how they had to keep themselves clean so that they can approach the Holy of Holies. They had to make atonement of sins, but now Christ is your high priest making atonement for you. That the Father may dwell in you. This is the understanding that many is not getting. Part this part of grace, this this part of the grace message. When you believe in the Son, the Son will lead you into all truth by faith. If you have that faith, you will let Him lead you into this truth, and then you will understand that, oh, the law is not done away with. Christ didn't lie. 
then you understand that, oh, the prophets, there's still things in there that ain't fulfilled. I mean, you'll start to study about prophecy. You say, wait a minute, we're living in the end of times. Look at what's going on. Look what's happening. These things are happening. You'll get an understanding. That's part of faith and belief. That's part of what happens after grace. Once you receive grace, forgiveness, and mercy, and you're living it, you're being grace, and you're forgiving people, and you're having mercy on people, and you're doing the things, the, the commandments, you know, the things that are written in the book. That's part of grace. That That's part of this message, the change. When people see you, they look at you differently. You, you're not like them. Well, what is it about you? I see that all the time. Grace is not just John 3.16. Grace is a lifestyle once you receive that grace, you walk in grace and mercy and belief and faith in what the Heavenly Father has given the Son to walk out, and you walk out it too. Look at Enoch and Elijah. They walked with the Most High. They were found to be perfect in His eyes, not without sin, but in His eyes. They were perfect. And he forgave them their whatever sin. And he took them. For when we are born, we are born. Every man that is born of Adam is born into sin. Even if you have to live a sinless life, that sin is on you because of Adam. The Christ was born of the Holy Spirit, born through Mary. He was born sinless. He was born of the Spirit into the flesh. And that is why through Christ, and only through Christ, can you be saved. Because you're going to be changed on the day that he come back. That's when he's going to dish out that grace, that mercy that the Father's going to. The Father gave him the power to change you, make you a mortal, change you into a new, new being, a spiritual being. That is our hope. We are waiting on this. And we will have all the laws, such as commandments in our minds just to do them. And we will be perfect. We will walk as the children of the Most High. We will look like the Father walking around here. I pray that you get an understanding the grace is a free gift from the Most High. After that is given, you must dive into His Word and believe and read and focus and, and fast and pray and live a life of constant repentance and repenting of your sins as you see them, as they come. And they will get less and less and less as you Grow, grow, grow more in spirit and faith and as a baby. As you grow as a child, the child grows. And we have many who's been in church for 20, 30 years, going to church, and they still don't understand the grace. Why? Because they have not done the things that the Most High has required of you to grow in faith. You have to obey his commandments and they are written throughout the book. You have to constantly open up from Genesis to Revelations and read. 
So you come across certain commandments that would stick out, stand out to you. You're like, okay, I need to, I need to put this into my life. He may be ready to impart that knowledge to you so that you can. But when you don't constantly read and get an understanding, you don't ever change those things that need to be changed within you. Instead, you go on with life. Dwelling on the things of this world that the world loves to enjoy. What are the things? What are some of these things? Television, the news, sports, entertainment, music. I'm not talking about real spiritual music, but the music of this world, which has all manner of things in it that are against the most high. What are other things that will hinder your grace? Going to the clubs, going to strip clubs, celebrating these holidays, which holly means holy if you look it up. You are celebrating the holy days of America, but will not celebrate not one holy day of the Most High in his book, which was eternal. His holy days was supposed to be forever. But for some reason, somebody stood up and told you Israel was done away with, so is the feast days, so is the commandments, so is the laws. Someone did this to you and you need to discover who did it because they're still in your grace. The more you stay within their man-made doctrine, telling you this, telling you that, when the Heavenly Father never said anything of such that his law, such commandments will be done away with once his son died, he never said that. It was a man who said that. This is how your grace is being stolen from you because you believe not the truth. Here's another thing that will get you. you. You wouldn't think so, but it is part of the word. Revelations. Revelations chapter 1 verse 14 through 15 talks about Christ having hair of wool. This is John, the revelator. He is told to write what he see in a book. He obeyed the commandment, but many don't want to believe this commandment that he obeyed. Christ said that hair of wool and skin of brass or bronze, which is a brown skinned man or a dark brown skinned man with hair of wool. People want to say, oh, that's racist to say that. But as long as the picture of this other Messiah was up there, nobody called racism on that. But when you mention the real biblical description of the Messiah, who was said to not have, he wasn't a good looking man at all. The scriptures tell you this. But they say, don't focus on that. Focus on grace. Well, grace comes from the Most High sacrificing his son, who is the word. And Christ said, I come in the volume of the book. That's all of it. You are not to throw away just because you think it's void and it's unimportant. Don't throw away his words. I have so many people do this. And they will call you racist for saying Christ is a black man or, or stop focusing on that and what I'm supposed to stop focusing on this part of the Bible because you tell me to stop focusing on this part of the Bible I believe all of it I believe the, all of the Bible just because your ears cannot take it and believe take it in and believe doesn't mean I cannot take that part in and believe 
And if you go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, it said the Ancient of Days had hair of wool. He didn't give no description of what color the hair was, but it gave you the texture. Hair of wool. The Ancient of Days had hair of wool. If you read down the rest of the verse, you'll, you'll get to understand who the Ancient of Days is. And remember Christ said that I, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So all of this is a part of grace. Once you receive that grace, that free gift of the Most High, you would follow the Messiah. You believe in his word. His word is written from Genesis to Revelations. And he will open your eyes and he will lead you to all truth. And the truth will set you free if you choose to tune out all of the other things you have been told. And just believe what is written right there before your eyes and ask the Most High to open your eyes. That he may impart understanding and knowledge that you may see. May the Most High give you ears to hear and eyes to see that all of His Word is the Messiah. All of it. None of it will come back void. And the description was given and so He came in the flesh in that same description and He walked it out. And many don't believe that. They would rather believe this other who came. And the scripture says that you would believe that another who come in his own name rather than believe in him who came in the Father's name. But you will believe another and that's this other created false messiah that they've been pushing on us for years. So Understanding grace, forgiveness, and mercy is all of this and more. But we don't want to overwhelm you with too much. Take your time, study, understand what is grace. What happened at the cross? What was really done away with? What was changed? What continued on past um What continued on past Christ's death? What is the new covenant he made? Now, I made a video about the new covenant. Go through my channel, find that video and watch it so you can get an understanding of what happened at the cross. What is this new covenant? Did it really just do away with all God's commandments, his laws? You have to get an understanding of these things, brothers and sisters. Shalom.